at 7.29 a.m. Modeling is a term that refers to behavioral, cognitive, and affective changes deriving from observing the actions of others. Modeling is a change in behavior as a result of direct imitation. What has just happened was that the students were rushing to get into their classroom not wanting to be late because they saw the teacher approaching it from afar. The teacher was always on time, and that affected the students' behavior in their punctuality too. A few moments later. Later. Okay, I would like to answer to this question. So I think uh, we can improve our English by exposing ourselves to real life situations such as watching uh, movies or listening to music in English. Yes, that's right, teacher. I agree with your answer because I think that we should put it in practice because practice makes public. Oh, okay, teacher. I also have some thought related to this problem. Oh, I think that. Uh, in order to improve education in Cambodia, we should like populate the benefits of uh, learning English in Cambodia more to the parents and the learners. Cognitive modeling is a change in thinking that can occur in individuals after observing models. In this scene, all of the students have been silent and hesitant to answer the question at first. But as one student spoke up, others followed her. Two thousand years later. Class, today we are going to study about Romeo and Juliet. Are you excited? So let's start. <laughs> Modeling can also result in emotional changes when a person observes a model's display of emotions, which is called affective modeling. In this situation, the teacher is enthusiastic about a lesson, which in turn affects the students' emotions, causing them to become enthusiastic about a lecture too. Much, much, much later. Come on, guy. We've been studying for too long already, and the deadline is not near yet. Are you guys down for a movie? Sure, man. I have been studying for so long. Let's have fun today. Um, I really want to join you, but you know, I haven't finished what I planned to do from last night. So, I won't be able to join. Sorry. Yeah, me too, guy. I want to finish my assignment first. There's a lot of stuff to do. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Self-regulation is the ability to direct and control one's own actions, thoughts, and emotions towards meeting goals. Delay of gratification is the ability to forego an immediate pleasure or reward in order to gain a more substantial one later. In this case, Students who chose to stay in class and complete the assignment were self-regulated, while the other two students were not because they ended up not following what they had planned to do. One eternity later. Self-regulated learning is the process of setting personal goals, 
combined with motivation, thought processes, strategies, and behaviors that lead to reaching the goals. Self-regulated learning includes goal setting. Students must be committed to challenging but realistic goals. Once they've set goals, self-regulated learners continually monitor their actions, which is called self-monitoring. Next, self-assessment helps students determine the extent to which their goals are being met. Lastly, learners must be able to match effective strategies to their goals, which is a process called strategy use. As teachers, we are role models for our students regardless of whether we choose to be or not. Our responsibility is to be the best role models that leaders and professionals have to offer. Not all students will become self-regulated learners. However, for those whom we succeed in building to be ones, we will have made a lifelong contribution to their success as learners as well as to their lives in general.